When it comes to independent developers nowadays, there are more channels than ever to get your game out there. Of course, there's Steam on the PC and the Xbox Indie Arcade on consoles. But then there's WiiWare, Nintendo's online service. Announced in 2008, WiiWare was touted as being a way for small budget developers to create original games using the Wii technology. On paper, this sounds great. In practice, not so much. There have been many problems with the service, which has caused many people to just stay away from it. But I'm going to attempt to convince you to give it a second look as we look at four WiiWare titles. Ladies and gentlemen, this is... well, you know. What a surprise, it's my 50th episode! Yes, 50 episodes. 50 episodes of me sitting on my ass getting eye strained. Why do you think I wear these shades inside? But to kick off WiiWare Month, I want you to be looking at one of the best games on the service. I'll be looking at one of the best independent games ever created. Originally created by just one guy, using retro style graphics to create an amazing world. For my 50th episode, we look at Minecraft, I mean, Cave Story. <laughs> The story behind Cave Story starts with Daisuke Amaya, known more commonly by his nickname, Pixel. Pixel would start development of Dokutsa Monogatari in 1999 while still at college, working on everything from the sprites to the backgrounds to even the music, eventually only finding time to work on the game during nights or his spare time after starting a family. Back in 2004, the indie scene was much different than it is today. Keep in mind, services like Steam and the Indie Arcade had either just released, or had yet to be released. There wasn't a widespread method back then for you to release your game. Pixel didn't care about making money from the game, he just wanted to express his love for gaming. And when the game was released in 2004, it was met with amazing acclaim, and will be recognized in English by the title, Cave Story. In 2008, an independent game company by the name of Nicholas asked Pixel if they could work on a graphical upgrade of Cave Story for the WiiWare platform, with Pixel overseeing everything. Which leads us to where we are now. First off, you actually have the option to play the game with either the original or remade sprites and music, which shows just how respectful this new version is to the original. The WiiWare version has three control options. The Wii modes, the classic controller, and the GameCube controller. And that's what I'm going to see on the map, as people think I'm digging my own grave lately discussing my opinion on controls. In Cave Story, you play a mysterious little robot, later revealed to be, quote, finding yourself in, where else, a cave. After trekking, and probably dying, you come across a pea shooter and head for adventure. The story revolves around the adorable race known as the Enigma, a mysterious evil doctor, and a harmful flower. The gameplay is most reminiscent of 8 and 16 bit classics like Metroid and Mega Man. In fact, if this game was made back in 1994, this would have been one of the greatest Super Nintendo games ever made. And like any retro game, the difficulty can really kick your ass at times with instant death traps and tough ass bosses. The main problem with some bosses is that they happen right after a long cutscene, and the inability to skip them can get really annoying. The world has this obvious retro charm about them, and each terrain has its own enemies and obstacles to maneuver yourself around in. 
not to mention a large range of creative bosses. The platforming is top notch, with Quote having some of the easiest to handle jumping I've ever seen in a platformer. Throughout the game, Quote meets a large variety of characters including Mimigmas, Sue, King and Taroko, your fellow robot Curly Brace, and of course the Doctor's Minions, the Witch Misery, and Bullrog, a character Pixel claims to have based off a bar of soap. To me, he always looked like a toaster or a bread box. Damn it, I'm hungry. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Mm. Anyway, <clears throat> Pixel did an amazing job fleshing out all the characters, so you actually feel something for them when something bad happens to one of them, as the game can go from light-hearted to incredibly dark very quick. There's a particular moment in the game, oh yeah, spoiler alert, good, good, where a captured Taroko is forced to red flowers which turn Enigmas into ferocious, mindless beasts, and you have no choice but to defeat her. Right before she dies, for a split second, she turns back to normal which makes the whole thing even more depressing. The game also has three endings, a good ending, a perfect ending, and a quote unquote bad ending. I say it in quotes because this ending has you and a scientist named Kazumi fleeing the compound on a baby dragon. When it comes to this ending, a lot is left up to discussion. What happens with the Mimigmas or Curly Brace? You will have to wonder and ponder if you made the right choice. Until you load your save again and make the other choice. Quote has a variety of weapons and what makes Cave Story different is that each weapon has a leveling system. Each weapon starts off on level 1, and after killing enemies, you get nachos. Call them triangles all you like, I'm calling them nachos. Each one levels up your weapon up to level 3, which allows for more powerful attacks, especially the machine gun. After meeting Curly Brace, she hands you her machine gun, and reaching level 3 allows you to hover using it. I found this incredibly useful and above all awesome, and considering we also get a jetpack, this game just became uber awesome. However, when you get hit, you don't just lose health, you also lose some of your weapon's XP. When I first downloaded the demo, I just couldn't stop playing. I found myself going back again and again playing this snippet of the game, until I gave in and just bought the game. And trust me, when you do the same, you won't regret it. But after the success of the WiiWare version, Cave Story's popularity would skyrocket, allowing him to be on two other consoles, both Nintendo a DSiWare download, and a complete remake on the 3DS. So let's check them out. Okay, let's try the 3DS version. Ha, ah, yes, um, do you have any copies of Cave Story for the 3DS in stock? Yeah. Oh, um, okay, uh, thanks. Oz Game Shop, they never let me down. Until now. Crap! Well, now what am I gonna do? Of course. Oh, how could I have been so stupid? How could I have been so blind? Huh. I didn't know it was a JB exclusive. Done! The 3DS version keeps everything that's true about the game. The story and characters are all here, but everything else has been greatly improved. The graphics have been completely remade from the ground up, and it looks amazing. As well as being able to use the original 2D sprites, not to mention having a brand new remastered soundtrack. The game is a bit specific with your standing position when it comes to interacting with people and objects. 
but seeing Pixel's work being remade with 3D graphics is absolutely amazing, and it's clear that NIS put a lot of work into this. That being said, these sprites actually do appear quite small in the 3DS system. It's really funny that Nintendo seems to be leading the pack when it comes to remakes. They don't just put a game on a disc, upsell the textures and call it HD, or at least an HD collection half finish that makes the original art director completely dumbfounded. Konami! The PC version is free to play and has been since its launch, and is available at cavestory.org right now with many language options available. Besides the freeware PC version, there's also Cave Story Plus, an updated version available on the Mac and PC through the App Store and Steam respectively. And of course, it's available on WiiWare, DSiWare, and the Re Remake on 3DS. It's come to the point that Quote and Nintendo have become so close, I half expect him to be in Smash Bros. 4. Holy crap, that would rule. Now, with the WiiWare version, there is a demo, but fuck it, read my lips. This game bloody rules. When it comes to the WiiWare library, this game stands towards the best it has to offer. Uh, 1200 Wii points, you're doing you and your Wii a great injustice by not playing this game. Cave Story is going to be one of the most influential indie games ever made. You don't have to look far of games like Bit Trip, Super Meat Boy, Fares, Minecraft, even big names like Mega Man 9 and 10 taking influence from Pixel's work, who after the surge of popularity in his title, quit his job as a salary man to become a full-time game designer. As of now, Pixel is working on a brand new 2D iOS game called Rockfish, which he hopes to have out by the end of the year. And lastly, thank you, everyone, for supporting my little show about games for 50 episodes. I couldn't have gone here without all of your support. And like always, I'll see you next week. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh yeah.